There are uh, two plugins that we've been working on. We've been working with the uh, with a, with a Microsoft, and actually Microsoft has been uh, really interested in jQuery for a while now. And one of the things that they've been doing is uh, they want to see some different plugins exist uh, to help their users. One of them uh, was called Data Linking, and Data Linking allows you to uh, synchronize uh, forms uh, on the page with a JavaScript object. And by doing that, it, it, it significantly simplifies your code and makes it much easier for you to uh, have a form that takes an object and then sends it to a server, for example. So for example, uh, we have some code here where we have a, a, a user object, for example. And we link that user object to a form, such that whenever the form is updated, uh, you know, if the first name is changed or the last name is changed, for example, uh, the user object will be updated automatically. I have a, a demo here uh, of it in action. So what we have here, we have a, a, a pretty basic form. Uh, this has things like uh, you know first name and last name. Bigger. So uh, you can see that you know you could you could change uh, you could change a name. Um, you could you know add a, a phone number. Um, you could change someone's you know age. You know, uh, whatever you wish. So. Uh, after you've uh, after you've updated your form, how, however you want, you can now say uh, save contacts, and it will give you a back a full JavaScript object that has all that information automatically uh, contained within it. So this makes it very easy to write you know complicated forms that have lots of data, and uh, when it comes time to get all the information back out again. It's just a single operation. In fact, it's not even an operation. It's happening automatically. Uh, so this ends up making all your code uh, much uh, simpler as a result. Uh, one nice thing in, uh, down here in the second piece of code, uh, we have the ability to update uh, the forms by updating the JavaScript object. So for example, uh, we have a, a product and we're linking the product to the form. And now whenever we update uh, a, a property on the product, for in this case, uh, sales rank, it ends up updating uh, the form as a result. So the nice aspect about this is that you no longer have to update form input elements directly. You can just let uh, the object take care of that for you. This is the, the real benefit of the data linking API. Um, obviously, in, in not in all cases, you won't necessarily have uh, the, the exact data that you want. So we also have the ability to do filtering and conversion, so that you can convert the values from uh, you know, whatever is being saved uh, or set on the form, and make sure you get saved as the, as the right result. Another plugin that we've been working with. Uh, uh, with Microsoft is uh, the templating plugin. Uh, this plugin integrates uh, very closely into uh, jQuery itself. It allows you to write uh, templating code that goes right into all the jQuery methods like append, prepend, before, after, uh, all those. So that way you can write a, a template uh, in this case, for example, there's uh, like a, a dollar sign uh, brace, and inside there is is your variable. Uh, but that gets replaced out of the data object that you send back. So this ends up making it uh, uh, your code very simple. So for example, um, you don't necessarily have to have your templates be in line, right in your JavaScript code. You could have your templates be external stored within a, a script tag, for example. Now this is uh, an interesting technique that we use. So you can see here we have a script with a type of text HTML. 
Uh, one thing that we found out when we were doing testing is that if you set a type on a script tag um, that the browser doesn't recognize, uh, you know, a browser doesn't know how to run uh, a text HTML script. Uh, there is no such thing. Um, but what we can do is we can use that to put our templates inside of there. And we can use that to you know, extract it later and, uh, and use those templates all throughout our code. Um, another thing that we can do, uh, as shown down here, is that we can uh, cache templates ahead of time. We can pre-compile them. So that way you can get really, really fast performance by building all your templates ahead of time than just using them by name. I have a, a, another quick demo of uh, the templates. So this here is a, a shopping cart. It allows you to go through and uh, buy movies. If we uh, look at the, if we, if we give it a try here, you can click an item, you, you can add it to your uh, shopping cart, and every time you add a new one, you can see it, it updates. There's now two in my shopping cart. Um, I can go through and I can add uh, another item. So yeah, you, can, you can keep going through and add lots of items uh, uh, to your shopping cart before checking out. This is, we think, this is a pretty typical situation. If you look at the source code, though, one thing that you'll see is here we have you know, our templates uh, stored in the script tags. And uh, it makes it really easy uh, to create this complex web page. So for example here, we even have the ability to do some basic logic. So for example here, we have you know, if count. So you can, you can make sure that, if, uh, that you're only displaying the cart uh, if there are actually items in the cart. So that way, uh, you, don't, uh, you, you can mix some logic into uh, your actual HTML, giving you the ability to create you know, more complex uh, web pages, and really in just a couple lines of code. It makes it very, uh, very simple. So you can even access data from uh, more complex objects, for example, you know, accessing them uh, for properties, uh, or even being able to pull in uh, sub-templates into a, a master template. So th this is, uh, again, it, it, you can create some really complicated things by using, uh, using this code. One of the things we thought was pretty interesting was, uh, in our templating code, was we added the ability to get back at the original JavaScript object from where a template came. So this is interesting because uh, if we look at the, the demo that I just showed, where you have the ability to, for example, remove an item by uh, clicking the X, this allows you to have, uh, for example, have an event handler, listen for any clicks on, on a remove, and be able to figure out exactly which object should be updated as a result. And this, again, this makes your code uh, much simpler because linking uh, your HTML on your page with the data representation on the back end can be really, really challenging. And this ends up making it uh, really simple as a result. 